Hello, everyone. Welcome to This is Pikeville. I'm Jill Fraley Dotson, your host for today's show, along with Pikeville Tourism Director Jimmy Taylor and Andrea Collins from Appalachian Wireless Arena. Good day, good friends. Day. How is hey, everyone? Jill. Doing great. Great. Very good. We are in a different location today. I know you all are excited to be here. Andrea, you specifically are very excited very to much, be here. Yes. We are coming to you today. Um, at the Overlook Event Center, which um, has been under construction for well over a year, and we are finally able to open it to the public, so we thought it was important to start having some shows here to see everybody what was inside and what they can offer. And, and the first thing that you see, obviously, when you walk through the front door is the gorgeous view that we're sitting in front of, a view that a lot of us over the years have become accustomed to because yes. of what was here before and, and being the scenic overlook, but now it takes on a whole different shape. So, Andrea, I know this is a building, we're going to talk a lot about mm -hmm. um, this building and, and your services that the arena provides yes. and the management of this space. Jimmy, this is also a tourist destination for you. So well, you're looking one it is. Yes, to absolutely. welcome so many people to Bob Amos Park. So let's first talk a little bit about, um, Jimmy, we'll start with you, about how tourism has taken on a little bit of a different shape in the last few months, certainly since COVID-19 pandemic has affected all of us in so many different ways, but, also, but really tourism has been affected because people had to stay home and stay in for a long time. Now things are opening back up, Restri some restrictions are being lifted, um, which you know is just in time for summer and for us to enjoy uh, the beautiful mountains of Eastern Kentucky and certainly Bob Amos Park. So tell us a little bit about what the city has going on. Um, our parks have been open ever since the restrictions have started, uh, but we have uh, opened our playgrounds up uh, starting June 1st. Uh, we have six playgrounds here in the city of Pike, in case you didn't know, uh, all those are now reopened. Our basketball courts, tennis courts, those are all reopened. Uh, as of today, July 1st, our community centers are now able to be booked. Uh, we're very glad to hear that because we've got a lot of June weddings and mm -hmm. or July weddings now that people yeah. are going to be wanting to book it for. Lots of July birthdays and birthdays Absolutely. going forward. Yes. Uh, let's mention some of our different uh, spaces that we have our, within the parks and our rec centers. Like, you know, we have one at Bob Amos Park. Mm -hmm. Um, talk a little bit about that one because it looks a little different than the other ones. Our community centers, is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh, the one at Bob Evans Park, of course, and our other one at uh, the Garfield House, which is right beside our beautiful city park. Uh, it's open as well and it's able to be booked. Uh, right now, with both of our community centers, uh, with the governor's restrictions, we're limited to 50 people or less. Uh, try to maintain social distancing, wear your mask when possible. Uh, both are very beautiful facilities. Our Garfield House is a more historic looking mm -hmm. house. Uh, it's got a full kitchen now uh, and it's located right next to our city park. So if you're having a birthday party or a reunion or anything like that, you can also utilize our city park. And if you want to use both in conjunction with each other, our city park gazebo and our shelter is available for $2 a day. $2, $2 a day. $2 a day. And most people don't know that. When, you, when they call me, they'll say, uh, well, I'd like to rent the uh, park for, let's say a day on, on Saturday. And it's available, and you tell them two dollars, and they're just like, "No, I, I want to park." Did you make a mistake? <laughs> but you, you did, no, yeah, it's yeah. really two dollars. It's very cheap, and and I'm proud to say that uh, our uh, <coughs> our mayor Jimmy Carter commission and Philip Ells want to keep it that way. Yeah. So we're very we're very happy to have it that. Is. Speaking of the park, it is absolutely beautiful right now. You know, it's one of my favorite times of year. I know, Andrea, yours too, you, you have a, a thumb for photography and yes. you love to go around and take pictures of the beautiful flowers that, that UMG and Doris, and the, again, takes care of. They're but gorgeous, if, yes. if you stroll through the park right now, everything is thick and in full bloom, and it really is just a beautiful place just to go sit. And I encourage everyone, you know, a lot of people are not wanting to go in restaurants right now, and I understand that because, you know, they're not at capacity and you just don't feel comfortable. But do curbside pickup at one of our many restaurants and go Absolutely. go to the park those the tables and benches are sanitized regularly so you know you don't have to to really worry about that but just go enjoy that part because as we've said before with many of our other um, activities that we have like the river and, and the trail system you kind of forget where you are for just yeah. a minute and you are do. able to get outside and enjoy it we also have if, if you're not if a park is not what you have in mind you want a more secluded location we also have three shelters available so you've got uh, one, two, three here on Bob Amos Hill where we're at, and those are also two dollars a piece. Yeah, and those a lot of those are located next to parks too, or playgrounds, I should playgrounds, say. Playgrounds, playgrounds. Playgrounds that you can utilize. Obviously, there's one at the track, and there's two as you come up the hill. So absolutely. Yes, um, 
a lot of opportunity to get outside and enjoy enjoy those offerings. Also, um, in addition to our uh, tennis courts, basketball courts, pickleball, uh, the track has always been open, but horseback riding and kayaking um, are now open with Hatfield McCoy Stables and Hatfield McCoy River Trails. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite thing to do is get on the river. I know a lot of people enjoy that or taking up kayaking, so that's a lot of fun. But you can rent the kayaks at their facility. And, and tubes. Also, and tubes, that's and right, tubes. and tubes. I have never done the tube on the river. I'm excited to try. You would, I, I you think would be surprised. Maybe we many, should do that as like a retreat. People love thing. Those tubes. very cool. Yeah, yeah, that would be a yeah. lot of fun. But then, I mean, the people at the barn are fantastic, and they offer a birthday parties, trail rides, pony rides, lessons. Lessons, yes, lessons. I think my little girl is going to take part in some horseback riding lessons, yes. which I think is so... Neat. A lot of people yeah. have an interest in horseback riding and trail riding and things. And, and if you don't have access to a barn, it's, it's kind of hard to do that. But we offer that here too. We offer two and hour, two and four hour uh, horse rides and kayak rides as well. Nice. Uh, the, you'll start out at uh, Jubilee Church, and that'll, that'll get you a four hour ride. Mm -hmm. And if you want to put in at Holiday Inn Express, that'll get you a two hour ride, all of which end at Texas Roadhouse. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful float. Um, we always talk about think you don't know where you are, you don't feel like where you are, you really can't gauge it while you're mm -hmm. on the river, even the location that right. you're at. If yeah, you just, once you're on that river, you can't tell you're in a city at no, all. No, one of the most tranquil uh, things mm -hmm. I think that we have to offer here, the mountain, most tranquil activities that we have. And, and you know, if you like to, to, to put your feet on the ground and go through our trails, Bob Amos Trail right now, the multi-use trail, is really beautiful. It, it really, really is. is. Yeah. Yes. And if you know, and you can meander through the backside of it too, and, mm -hmm. and make it more than just that that three mile stretch that's there. You can yeah. stay in the mountains all day if you want to. Let's talk, Andrea, about the Overlook Event Center. Yes. Um, this is something that we have anticipated opening for mm -hmm. months now. And, and we've been waiting on it for a while. So. Yeah, I know <laughs> you have too, and you've been fielding so many questions about it and booking yeah. so many events. Unfortunately, when the pandemic hit in a um, March, mm -hmm. we um, we had to cancel yes. a number of events that were already scheduled because re initially we were going to open um, the facility in April, mm -hmm. but obviously everything had to be pushed back. We're now at the beginning of July. It is open yes. and you're ready to book all kinds of things here. Yes, our first actual event is in here is tomorrow actually, so we're excited about that. Uh, the catering department is all ready to go and we're just ready to get back at it. So. Yeah, uh, and it's hard when you when you're so active mm -hmm. in booking events and creating events um, to be just completely yes, shut down. It is. It's very different. Um, we work in a very fast-paced, high-energy uh, type of field, and it when things slow down like they did in March with COVID nineteen, it kind of kind of put a damper on on all of our basically just on us because we're just so used to moving moving fast and we had to slow down and but now we're happy that things are picking back up and uh, I've been answering a lot of questions and taking a lot of phone calls about the event center and getting everybody in here who wants to be in here and I'm excited to get it rolling. Yeah. So. so what are some of the different things the event center can be used for because obviously it's a 7,000 square foot building. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, we'll see 350 people but mm -hmm. when you come inside is it just the one big room or can it be sectioned off? It can be sectioned off into three separate areas. Those areas are of different sizes. They're varying sizes. So there's a small area, a medium area, and a larger area. Um, we can divide those spaces for you uh, for a specific event if you just need to use a smaller space. If you want to use the whole room, you have that option. Um, but you can also divide it and do two separate things. Like we have a lot of people that are dividing the space and doing a wedding on one side as, or the ceremony on one side and having the reception on the other. So um, that's always an option as well. Um, there's just a lot of things that can be done here. Um, we, I know we've booked some, uh, so far we have booked some family reunions up here. There are a, a few weddings, uh, some uh, class reunions. Um, retirement parties. Retirement parties, yeah. Booked one of those today, actually. <laughs> and uh, we also have birthday parties. We can do pretty much any type of event that you want. If you want to have your grandmother's 100th birthday party here, we will more than ha be more than happy to make that happen. So. Yeah, and one of the great things about this space is too, when you, get, when you rent the building, you rent the building. So that right. includes the outside space too. Yes. At the end of the building, as you come up uh, the parking lot, the first thing you see 
um, is the huge fireplace that's outside that's an um, indoor outdoor fireplace. Yes. But I, I envision weddings in front of that oh, fireplace yeah, and then beautiful. using the decking and the patios for a reception area. Yes, it will be absolutely beautiful. And we've actually already, I had, had a couple up here on Saturday morning and we discussed doing some things outside with a reception area and uh, doing some things inside as well. So there's a lot of space up here to be utilized and we're happy to use it all, so. Absolutely. Let's talk about Elite Catering for just a moment sure. too because they will provide the catering for the center. Correct, Elite Catering is the uh, Appalachian uh, Wireless Arena's catering department. Um, that is uh, operated by uh, Tyler Williamson, he's the catering director, and then we also have the executive chef, which is Wes Hutchison. And um, they can do pretty much anything that your heart desires. Um, we also, that includes some decorating, our catering department includes some decorating. Uh, we have access to quite a few decoration items that we have in stock that that your catering costs will include some of that. So that is helpful with centerpieces and things like that. Um, but you also have the option to bring in your own decorator if you want to do that. But um, as far as the catering and the food goes, Wes can make anything your heart desires. So that is a anything truth. you want, he can make. <laughs> so we do have a sample menu that we send out to people. Um, that menu is currently priced for 25 people, but um, he, it, t it needs to be updated a little bit just because food prices are so varying right now, especially with everything with COVID-19, things are changing. So just uh, if, you, if we send you a menu, if you want a menu, we'll send you a copy of it. Just take a look at it, pick out what you want, and then we can price those items for you. Very good. And I can tell you speak from the heart that anything that Wes makes is fantastic. Oh, it's delicious. And yeah. if you if you really are unsure, um, if you might be a picky eater, like our friend Jimmy Taylor, <laughs> he can right. certainly be accommodating though yes, and come very... up with a lot of different ideas and things that you would have never ever thought of. If yes. you wanted to do a themed wedding and you want, you know, if you wanted barbecue or a low country boil, you know, he can do that. Yes, or if he can. You, you want something that's more um, uh, with steak and potatoes kind of thing, he can do that too. So really anything, I love how you say anything your heart desires, he, we can do it. He can do it. Absolutely. He can do anything. Also, I want to mention that um, we have the option of um, if, if you need anything or if you want to contact one of them, just give uh, the arena a call. Uh, you can call 606-444-5500 and you can ask for Tyler or Wes, and either one of them will be happy to help you out. So. What I love too is that Wes has also been doing, he and Josh have been together doing a yes. series of, <laughs> of Facebook Live videos. I don't know, Jimmy, if you've seen them or if some of our viewers yes. have seen them, but they are absolutely fantastic. They did one for Father's Day that was great, yes. and I had to go back and rewatch it because I wanted the pasta recipe. Yeah. Um, but, but those are just some of the things. There's such a lively bunch that yes. you work with and, and really fun group and, and always looking for different ways to enter entertain us, but also to feed us well and, and to make sure that um, that everybody, every aspect of the arena yeah. is um, is available for people to see what they offer. Correct. So that's exciting. Now, if they want to book this, all they have to do is call you. Yes, give me a call. Uh, you can reach me at 606-794-0231. And you can also get on the, um, the arena's um, website. Website, Facebook page. You can also shoot me an email. All of that information is on there and available to you. One of the other venues that you also book is the Appalachian Center for the Arts. Yes. And I think a lot of people don't realize that that space can be um, rented for events. Yes. Because the seats push back and you'd have that whole floor there to use it. You also have the, the entire theater as an option to use, the inside of the actual theater space. Mm -hmm. And like you say, we can push those seats back. You can have set, we can set up uh, banquet parties, things of that type in there. But you also have the option of using the upstairs uh, space and the lobby, like the lobby space upstairs and downstairs. Mm -hmm. Both of those spaces are absolutely, absolutely beautiful. And if you have um, an event that you don't require a lot, you're not requiring a lot of space and you don't have a lot of people, that's one of the options that you have is either of those three sections of the Appalachian Center for the Arts. We have a lot of different uh, venues in the city mm -hmm. of Pikeville that can be utilized for our community, our residents, and certainly all of Eastern Kentucky. So um, we, we look forward to, to filling up those spaces and making sure that everyone's event is just as perfect as, as what they imagine it yes, to be. Absolutely. We have a lot of history, and Jimmy, you mentioned the Garfield House just a few moments ago that's more historical in nature, uh, but you have also been doing, um, for the last couple of months, uh, a series of, 
of shows or videos called Pikeville History Moments that have been so informative for, for so many people, and, and for me in particular, just learning things or maybe being uh, reminded of, of maybe some things that I had forgotten. So let's talk a little bit about the Pikeville History Moments and how people can see those. Pikeville History Moments. Um, I kind of think of this as trying to educate everyone on how much history we do have here in the mountains. Uh, it's not only for Pikeville, but it's also for our region. Uh, we have a collaboration between the Tourism Department UPAC Alara Library, Pike TV, and uh, uh, Big City Heritage Museum. The museum has been playing a big part in this. They've been helping uh, uh, some of our people write scripts for these. Uh, they play every other week. Uh, they're on our YouTube channel. Our first one was President Garfield, of course, and we've also went ahead and did uh, Ellison Cotton Top Mounts, the hanging of Ellison Cotton Top Mounts. And our next one is going to be uh, about the Poly Bridge. Uh, yes. give you a perfect example of things that I didn't know. Uh, after the Poly Bridge was constructed, they were doing some work on the, the, uh, the ropes that go around to hold the bridge, the suspension part of the bridge. Uh, one of the construction companies accidentally let it fall in the river. Oh, wow. Had no idea. We've got pictures of that actually wow. on well, some of the so videos. That's so interesting. So that you, you learn a lot of our history through these videos. No doubt. They're, it's a really good series. and. Um, it, it is such a collaborative effort between you and the museum and Brad Sloan and Ronnie Hilton helps us out. I mean, it really is, there are so many people that are that involved in these videos, but they really are being well received. And I look forward to to uh, seeing what the next, the next topic is going to be, because uh, like I said, it, you know, it reminds you of things that you may have forgotten and certainly things that, uh, that you didn't even know. One thing I want to touch on before we go is that We've had to have so many events that have canceled. Mm -hmm. Main Street Live, the first one that we had scheduled on July 3rd, being one of them. But the good news is, is that the July 4th fireworks will continue to take place as they have every year at dark 30, they dark say, 30. Or, yes. or 10 o'clock <laughs> around. Uh, the festivities downtown had to be canceled this year, but we certainly still invite people to come in and stay in their cars, practice social distancing if they get out of their cars, remain with your family unit, and enjoy the biggest fireworks display in, in, in our region. And if you can't, you can always watch it on our live stream. Yes. Uh, I'll be posting a link on our Facebook page, our tourism Facebook page. Uh, you'll also be able to, I'll send out a link so you can see it on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we encourage everyone, if, if you feel sick, to stay home, enjoy the fireworks live on stream, and uh, you can enjoy them all month long that way if you'd like. You know, that's one of the things I hadn't thought about before is that, you know, if you can't do it on the 4th and can't see it on the 4th, and you can celebrate the 4th of July all month, all month long, so mm -hmm. why not? Yeah. You know, things have changed a little bit, so we can create our own events exactly. and activities. And with, our own residents that's moved away from here heck, can enjoy them yeah. from Pike. Well, yeah. That's, well, that's something, too, that we mentioned, you know, um, Appalachian Center for the Arts, they're doing their virtual Broadway yes. boot camps, which is really interesting. And, and I didn't know until uh, just earlier that there are students who are participating from Wisconsin and from other parts of the country yes, that would not have had the opportunity Correct. to come to come be part of, of those beautiful and wonderful uh, camps that Robin does so well at the app. So, you know, with, with so many... I guess discouraging things that have happened with with the pandemic and things that we've had to change. There's been a lot of encouraging things too, Very and, true. and yes. maybe somebody who had never seen our part of the world gets gets to enjoy the beauty for just a little bit. The last thing I want to talk about, Jimmy, I know you're excited about this. We are having a lot of people talked about movie nights, and we've you know done movie nights in the park before and things of that nature. But this time we're going to do it a little differently, and I think it's going to be a huge hit. Reels in the heels. Reels yes, in the heels. Uh, we're thrilled to be able to say that we can now um, have a drive-in style uh, mm -hmm. drive-up movie. Uh, I can't, I'm not really supposed to tell the name of the movie, but it's, it's a newer movie. Uh, you can imagine it's going to be a kid's show. Mm -hmm. So there could be a cowboy in it. There could be a space ranger in it. Uh, Bo Peep may be even in this, this film. Yeah, uh, It's absolutely free. Uh, it's going to be limited to the first 100 cars. July the 24th, dark 30, of course, which we're thinking 8, 30, 9 o'clock for this show. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be set up in, I think the arena is going to be catering or doing the concessions for that event as well. It will be as much like a drive-in style movie as we can get it. The, the screen is big. It's in yeah. a perfect location. 
um, you'll be able to tune in the movie to on, on your car radio. Yeah, so yeah. Um, that'll be really, really fun. The arena, like you said, is going to do some concessions, and I know they're going to be fantastic. It's not going to be your regular popcorn and things like that. I mean, there'll be some really good things there. But, you know, this is the first time we've tried this, so we're also trying to think outside the box and look at some different yes, events we that we can have yeah. that can keep people safe and can keep those social distancing guidelines met. So this is the first one on July 24th, but I anticipate those going into the fall. Um, maybe every chance we get, maybe every month. Free, 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 free. Family fun for everybody. Yes, Guys, I thank you so much for your time today. I know we, we're, we've we been kind of giddy about getting in this building oh, and yeah. really opening it up <laughs> for everyone. The road is now open. You can drive up, take your pictures, do whatever you need. Um, but Jimmy, for people who are looking for tourism information, what's the app? Visit Pipewell.com. You can download that app on iPhone or Android. Uh, for more information on our arena, AppalachianWirelessArena.com. Uh, we encourage everyone to download our app. That way you yeah. get the latest information right at your phone. You can also book your venues that way too. Absolutely. All right. Guys, thanks again. Andrea, Thank Jimmy, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure seeing you, Jill. <laughs> Very good. This has been This is Pipewell. Thank you so much for joining us.